Hello and welcome. In previous videos I have looked at the old Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway Line from Melton Constable to Cromer, to Yarmouth Beach and to Norwich City. But the majority of trains that used those lines came from much further afield, such as the Midlands or the North, via Peterborough or Bourne, and then via South Lynn, and it is from there to Melton Constable that I shall be looking at in these videos. In 1876, the Lynn and Fakenham Railway was established, with a line open to Massingham from Gaywood Junction on the Great Eastern Railway branch to Hunt Stanton in August 1879 and on to Fakenham a year later. This was extended to Melton Constable in 1880. In 1885, a four and a half mile loop was opened via Gayton Road, known as the Borsey Loop. This allowed trains to bypass Kings Lynn and a new station was opened at South Lynn and this is where I shall start this video. So the finished line ran via Gayton Road, Grimston Road, Hillington, Massingham, East Rudham, Raynham Park, Fakenham Town, Thursford and on to Melton Constable. Before I look at all these stations in detail, one must bear in mind that it is only a snapshot of what existed at one time. All the stations were altered or added to at different times. And to go into detail would take far too long. There are, however, many books on the subject, some of which are in the description. So we start at South Lynn Station, probably the most important through station on the system. Most trains change locomotives here, hence the engine shed had the largest allocation of locos on the system. The station comprised in 1901 of a large island platform with a small island platform to the south. A footbridge connected the two. There was also a large engine shed, which we've already mentioned, a turntable, coaling stage, cattle pens, two goods yards together with goods sheds. Also two signal boxes, west box and junction box to the east. Other facilities comprised a fitting shop, sand oven, offices and mess rooms and a water tank. So starting at South Lynn Station uh, circled there, the original line in 1876 curved round and up onto the Great Eastern Line and the later uh, new line in 1885, the new Borsey Loop indicated by that arrow curves right down round and then up to the right and on to Fakenham. And on this satellite shot, the top arrow shows the original loop round and up to the Great Eastern Line. And the bottom arrow, you can just make out the curve round the bottom of the later edition. And as you can see from this shot, there is nothing left of the station. It's now a road um, and an industrial estate. And the only remains are the concrete large concrete goods shed standing in the middle of that industrial estate and that's the only thing that's left of that large station. Very sad. So we will now follow the Borsey Loop and the line crosses the A10 and underneath the A47 via a bridge here and this is looking towards Fakenham, away from South Lynn. And the next point that we can visit is this bridge, number 71, on the South Lynn side of Gayton Road Station. 
This is an elliptical masonry bridge that's looking towards South Lynn. And if I swing round over the parapet, that is looking towards Gaten Road Station. And Gaten Road Station is not far ahead. There is a little bit of platform there, but I couldn't find it. <coughs> And this is another look at the bridge down on the at track level. It's been fenced off, that hasn't prevented the local artists though. And that's looking towards Baconham and the next station. So Gaten Road Station, just on from the bridge we've just looked at, which is at the bottom of this map where it says posts. Uh, a double line of railway through this station served by two platforms. The station building was of a new design similar to Paston and Napton. This building was on the upside. Access between the platforms was via a boarded crossing. An elliptical bridge arch, bridge number 72, spanned the tracks at the end of the platforms. The signal box was on the up platform. Other facilities comprised two sidings, a head shunt and a cattle dock. Uh, one of the sidings to the right hand side there continued to one of the sand pits. Um, it was run by a chap called Bowen who uh, used to uh, run a little um, narrow gauge railway into one of the sand pits. All of these sand pits have been flooded now to create Borsy Country Park. Next we come to Borsy Sidings. Here the original line of the Lynn and Fakenham curved in from the west. At the other end, on the same side, a siding to the sand pit that also diverged to the west. Movements were controlled by a signal box situated between these two connections on the downside. And here is a, a more modern shot of that area. You can see the uh, main line now going from across, diagonally across the picture and the original old line used to curve in from the west side, marked by that arrow. Next we come to Grimston Road Station, situated in the parish of Royden, and actually a mile and a half from Grimston. The station comprised of two platforms and a station building in the W and J office style. At the Melton end was a level crossing and signal box. The goods yard consisted of two sidings, head shunt, goods shed and cattle pen. A brick built tariff shed was later provided. A small station master's cottage was also provided next to the Union Jack pub. And this is what's left now. There's the old station building. I did think at first that that might be the platform edge, but actually the platform is the other side of the building. This is the road side. And the, that would be the yard area. And the, the two lines would have crossed the road here via level crossing and continued in that direction towards Fakenham. And if I swing round, there's the Union Jack pub. And the station master's small cottage is the other side, which I forgot to take a picture of. And there's the yard area, or what was the yard area. So that's Grimston Road. And now we'll move on towards Fakenham. Just before the next station, we're on now on Royden Common. That's looking back towards South Lynn along the old track bed. And this is looking in the other direction and there's a road ahead 
which the railway crossed and there would have been a gate cabin number four on the left hand side here. And across the road there's the continuation of the old alignment. And just to prove that there was a railway here, here's a fence straining post that we have seen many times before on the old railways and that's looking towards the next station. Further along now we come to bridge I think number 72 um, elliptical masonry. Um, it uh, allows St Andrew's Lane to cross the railway. It's marked as a historic railway bridge I don't know why this one should be singled out because there are others as well as this one. That's looking towards South Lynn from St Andrew's Lane across fields and obviously nothing, no evidence of a railway line. And this is looking the other way. Uh, again, no evidence of a railway line. That's looking to, as I say, looking towards Fakenham. So um, I couldn't park anywhere, so I use good old Google. And on we go now, and the next station is Hillington. Initially a single platform, but in 1896 a passing loop was added and a dam platform also. The station building was in gold brick pavilion style with red brick dressings. A signal box was situated on the dam platform. The small goods yard consisted of one siding, later increased to two, cattle pen, horse dock and a small brick goods shed. A long dam refuge siding extending westward was later added. The station had been used several times by King Edward VII when Prince of Wales and a red carpet was kept at the station. And now this is all that's left. I did visit it, but Google was just as good as what I could have taken, so I didn't bother stopping. This is the roadside of the station. And there is the uh, station master's house. Quite... Uh, Quite an imposing building, actually, for, for that time, because a lot of accommodation would have been quite small and basic. But uh, the station master, he was a very important man, so he had a, an important looking house. Next we come to Wilson Siding. This was named after Mr E. W. Wilson, who was opening a quarry and requested a siding to be built on his land to serve the quarry. A single siding and head shunt was built on the downside. Gatehouse number seven is nearby. The siding was closed in 1914, but in 1938 the Air Ministry acquired it to bury large tanks in the quarry to hold aviation fuel. And this is gatehouse number seven, now a dog hotel. Dog hotel, I should say, I'm not uh, missing out my age. And after we left the last location, it looked as though the railway ran along or very close to the road. And uh, that's looking along what I thought was the old track bed towards Fakenham. And there were some fence posts and, and concrete gate posts, which are a sort of an indication of the old railway. And it's slightly raised up as if it had been a, a railway embankment. And a bit further along the same road, looking back, there is still what looks like a bit of an embankment and some more gate posts there. Um, I'm sure this is, uh, when I look at old maps, it does run close to the road. 
and that's looking towards Fakenham. Next we come to Massingham Station. Until 1880 it was the terminus of the Lynn and Fakenham Railway. It was also the last station building to be made of concrete. Two platforms with an office style building on the up platform. A station master's house was also provided. There were also cattle pens, grain shed and goods shed. A tariff shed and shelter were provided on the down platform. The track work consisted of a passing loop, two sidings and a head shunt. A brace girder bridge, footbridge in timber, later renewed in steel, spanned the platforms. The adjacent road was crossed via a level crossing. So this is what's left now. There is in fact the station master's house which you can see there. The station building, the tariff shed, the platforms and the signal box are still there. Although two bungalows have been built on the old goods yard. Unfortunately there were so many cars and vehicles around I couldn't get a clear shot. And the Google one is actually clearer to what I could have got. So there are the two bungalows that are built on the old goods yard. Well that I think is enough for part one. We've arrived at Massingham which was the original terminus. So in part two we'll carry on towards Fakenham and Melton Constable. So thanks for watching.